Hey, welcome back to the channel. I thought I'd do something on electric pianos as it's been a while and recently in the news, Vintage Vibe has released their latest piano. So I thought it'd be cool to have a look over the, the page that they've released showing the details of that piano. I've got lots of quite interesting videos coming up very soon. So do stick around for those. In the meantime, I thought this would be a, a good little video to get out. So if you're unfamiliar with who Vintage Vibe are, I believe they started out refurbishing and hiring out different vintage keyboards and then they started providing spares and then they've gone on to make their own pianos. I actually have one of their pianos here and you know, really good that the legacy of Howell Rhodes is still being continued through the likes of Vintage Vibe through the Rhodes Mark 8 and as a customer and a consumer I think it's great that we've got two different companies competing and it, you have a choice and that's really cool but yeah let's have a look at what their latest offering is so we're looking at the Marcus 73 so we've got a nice close-up here now the first thing we notice is we've got this really cool logo and I quite like the teal kind of reminds me of like an American car I'm not sure of what that relates to i do believe that actually the the 73 to that font was from an american car so maybe that's like a, a reference back to that 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 was on the original um fender Rhodes pianos so we've got two images we've got an original fender Rhodes. this looks like quite an early stage model with passive controls and we've got vintage vibes offering which once more has got vintage controls now i believe this is kind of coming in at quite a low price and i'm not going to put the prices in because they'll change all the time so i don't want my video just to be instantly out of date but one thing that does kind of impress me is the price that the car coming in with this piano is that it's comparable to what i see a lot of refurbed one pianos selling for what is that going to change the second hand market are people going to question like i can get a brand new piano with brand new tines they have no fatigue no rust the case is brand new or do i get the vintage instruments i'm not sure i think it depends on how much tax and import duties would be but i can definitely see it having an effect on the second hand market because it's, it's going to be difficult to find um an original mac one in such a good condition that it justifies not buying a new piano in my opinion sound wise there might be a difference in sounds there might be other differences in playability every piano is different i'm not aware of any videos showing what this one actually sounds like but I imagine it's consistent with the other Vintage Vibe pianos. And then the next thing that really quite impresses me is for something that I'm guessing is meant to be a competitive price, they've included variable voice control. So that, that allows you to change the position of the pickup relative to the time. And it just gives you such an extra range of voices. So this is a passive instrument, but you can kind of get your, your, your typical sine wave from your fundamental, but then you get your, your double sine wave from an octave above mixed in so i think that's really cool i think for a vintage piano and an offering of that i wasn't really expecting to for them to include that i definitely look to see how much it would be to get it added to my piano actually so as we scroll down we kind of see what the original piano is i'm not going to read this all out to you if you are interested in this i'm going to put a link to the side it's not really my content if i just read it to you but there's a nice piece here where dave rhodes the son of harold rhodes the inventor of the fender rhodes has a tour around the factory and is impressed with what vintage vibe are doing i quite like this photo so we get a closer look at the lid now on the previous pianos they had quite a glossy glittery lid and it was made of like fiberglass or other materials that this looks like they've gone back to an abs lid the same as like a mark one and it looks like it's got very similar texture and i really like it it's definitely resonates back with that original design and it's the same with this name rail you can see the the extruded lines as we go across it i think it looks really cool and it it celebrates that original design so moving up just one thing other thing to point out is let's have a look we've got a stand the stands look identical the pedal looks pretty much the same apart from color the only other no difference i kind of noticed is that in the original it was designed inside a, a hard shell case so that this came with a lid and made it quite easy to move around. I'd be curious to know if that would be an extra for this piano because I really like to protect my instruments and you know I really like deck savers and if it did have some type of protective case that was an optional extra it'd be difficult not to include that if I was to be buying one. So what else have we got? We've got the action. So this is really cool. So the first thing I noticed is like the the bright coloured tone bars. So these are all gold. That looks really cool. I don't know if that's zinc or like anodized but either way that looks like it's protected quite a few years from rust and then as we look at the back we can kind of see a lot of the weight reduction they've, they've done but here you wouldn't normally be able to see the back of the keys on a normal fender roads and also this this aluminium bar here um it's, it's much more significant on the original so you can see how much lighter it is just in the design and that's really good 
because um, these are a pain to move, especially the suitcase models. It takes some very understanding bandmates for you to ask them to move this from gig to gig. But I suppose the next thing we look at is we see that the, this base is cut out a lot more and I think that spawns more, a lot more of the weight saving. So that's it's really good, I really like it. I think that's, that's a good design. Interestingly, they've stuck with the individual damper arms. So I guess that allows you just like the slight flexibility of being able to taper each damper arm exactly to the center of each time. Where if you've got combs of damper arm, that isn't really an, issue, an option. What have we got here? Okay, so here's what it looks like from the top. Yeah, that, that gold looks really cool. It's such a nice looking instrument. It's such a shame I put a lid on it, but it does need to be done. You wouldn't want this getting full of dust. So yeah, next we've got the tines. These look pretty cool. Look fairly standard to what I'm used to seeing. We've got these ridges on the bottom here, which gives it a nice solid connection to the, the tone bars. Big bag of tine material. That looks nice. So looking at this picture, we can kind of see some of the changes we have. Here we've got a different model it looks like because we've got a preamp built in and this looks like I have similar controls. We've got like a power and volume and then we've got like treble and bass and then some tremolo controls. So I'm guessing there's going to be some sockets on the underside that allow you to have like a send and return head for output. Now this has a battery to control it which is pretty cool. Less wires to trail around. It's got headphone out which I really like. I really like electric piano you just kind of walk up to. You can play, you can put your headphones on, play all night long. I like it with little distractions. The best criticism I heard of this piano is, why would you spend so much on one piano that makes one noise? It takes up so much space. Can it be justified? Is that one noise that good? Now, if you follow my channel, I'm sure you probably do agree that electric pianos do sound that good and do deserve studio space, but I can definitely see other people's opinion of saying, would a, would a VST of this piano be sufficient? I don't know. But for me, actually playing a real one, it's just so enjoyable. It, 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 there's a huge difference, but everyone's different. I can't speak for you. I'd be interested to know what you think. So we've got it from a different view. But this one's the stage model. I really like the lack of nameplate. I think it just reminds me of those early models. Okay, this is quite good. I like the V logo. If you see across the top, we've got these lines across the top. I think that's going to give us quite a bit of strength so that if you were to stack stuff on, it looks like that those Vs would actually stiffen it across the middle. I don't know, but it definitely looks, it, it looks strong to me. I'd like to know what they say that you can put on this. But yeah, I think it's great you've got the option of passive or having the preamp. I like preamps because you've got the headphones straight out and also kind of kills the chance of any noise between the piano and how you record this and I think that's good. Tremolo, it's the most common effect so you most likely do want to have it especially accessible as you play but at the same time there's nothing wrong with the stage controls. I'm sure you'll have just as much fun with the piano with like that. So I can definitely see what they've done. I think with the previous vintage vibe pianos you had a lot of choice of different colours and different finishes. There was different sizes of piano and this looks like a bit of streamlining to kind of tie up some of the spare parts so if we only make name rails of one variety for spare parts and our pianos that should save cost i'm guessing this is why they've managed to come in at a competitive cost with this and it's the same with the lids if they only offer one type of lid they've only got a stock one type of lid and that's going to save cost it's going to save storage it's going to save logistics it's going to save so much it just makes life easier for them to manufacture they're not going to have to check a manufacturing order sheet every piano should be the same or give or take a preamp i think that's why it's quite interesting that the price they come up with is so close to what i see so many refurbished piano seller. Do you think this might have a bit of an effect on the second hand market? Because it's hard to justify buying a second hand piano. As I said, tines only have a finite life. You can only hit a tine so many times until it breaks. I can't remember the number off the top of my head, but it's definitely one of the manuals. It's over like 200,000 times. And if you hit that one note every beat and you play that song over and over, it soon adds up. And if you think about how much tines are and how many there are in a whole piano, it, it, it's, it's, it's hard. It's definitely uh, hard to justify. So we've got a close up of the preamp. I'm curious to know how this is going to actually fit into the name rail, although it doesn't really matter to me. But yeah, it looks a good follow. So this is a preamp. This looks quite a different layout to their current preamps. So I wonder if there's a new design. I wonder how different this is to the, the current preamp that they sell for the fender rods. Oh, this looks nice. Do you like a suitcase model? Yeah, that looks pretty cool. I think it'd be hard not to find space for this if you had the opportunity. 
but yeah that, to me that looks really cool it looks exactly how you want it to look it looks like an old model of all brand new parts but yeah, I haven't looked through. I think it's it's. I can see what they're doing. I can see that where the cost savings should be to make it competitive. But even at, with those, I kind of see that they've included all the features. They've still included variable voice control. They've still included the capstans on the keys so that you can adjust the key height and where the hammer throw uh, position is. As much as it is kind of a lower price, I don't see it as being budget. And, but I can see it doing well. But yeah, I really like the Micro 73. It looks really cool. I want to see what it sounds like. I want to see some people playing it. It's going to be interesting to see what it does to the second hand market. So as a piano player, or at least someone who tries to scrape by, it's great that we've got the Valenti piano, we've got the Mark 8, we've got the Vintage Vibe piano, but we've also got this version of the Vintage Vibe piano. I'd love to know in the comments what you think of it. If you agree with what I spot, if you think there's anything that I've missed. But yeah, I think that's it for this part. Um, stick around, as I say, I do have some pretty good videos coming up if I don't say so myself.